Hello, this is Chris with CricketUsers.com. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the Motorola uh, Droid 4 originally on Verizon and walking you guys through how to flash it to Cricket Wireless. I pretty much got this device um, as soon as it came out. I don't know why it took so long to make the video. I did post the tutorial on how to flash it. It looks like here on uh, February 14th of 2012. Alright, uh, I'm going to kind of try to follow the tutorial to the best of uh, my ability to make it easier uh, for you guys. So, it behoove you to open up the tutorial on a website and uh, watch the video at the same time. Uh, if you don't have the Motorola drivers, that's pretty much the first thing you're going to want to do. Go ahead, download those and uh, install them. Uh, there are a couple ways to get your Motorola Droid 4 into Diag mode. I posted my results with one and then pretty much the old faithful way which is to use an application called HW Serial Port, uh, the free version, uh, one port uh, only. Uh, pretty much you're gonna install it and then you'll get something like this. Go ahead and hit login. Now you're gonna want to have placed your phone into PC mode first. Let's take the device off of standby here. Uh, once you plugged it into your computer, you can drop that down, USB connection, and you'll see PC mode there. That's the one you want. Let me go into the settings and make sure the display doesn't go off in this so I can see it. It might not have gone out because uh, we're using a screen capture device. That's uh, what you're watching right now. Uh, I should add that to the tutorial if I didn't. It needs to be in PC mode. Uh, I don't think I had it there. But anyways, yes, it does need to be in PC mode. I think here I stated it right there. Okay, anyways, let's go to the configuration of HW Serial Port. Uh, default password's admin. Unless you go into this little uh, utility right here, uh, it's going to be admin. So go ahead and log in. Um, the COM port, it already sets up a uh, COM port. You can change that COM port if you need to. You shouldn't have to. Your IP address, you're going to want that to be 192.168.16.2. Your port, you're going to want to be 11,008. Go into the settings. You're going to want to make sure NVT is not enabled, so make sure the checkbox is not there. And uh, if you plan to flash Motorola phones in the future and you're going to need to use this application, I'd go ahead and hit Save Settings to INI File as an initiation file. Uh, it'll save your IP address and port in there, so you won't have to reconfigure this uh, again, hopefully. So after you've done that, your phone is in PC mode, drivers are installed, go ahead and hit Create Com. On VSP, it's going to show you the status creating the port. That's the uh, port on COM3 on the computer side. And then the LAN status, this is uh, reflects it actually being connected to the device. So if you get connected, uh, you're good. If not, check your modes, try, all over, try it over again if you have to reboot the phone and or reboot the uh, computer. Uh, it seems like once you lose this connection with the uh, computer for whatever reason usually you have to um, reboot the uh, the computer uh, in order to get the connection reestablished. Okay now we have that we're going to go down to uh, CDMA Workshop. Uh, the instructions here are for CDMA Workshop uh, 2.7 recently uh, CDMAware released a free utility that will let you send NV items. Uh, you can find that on their page. I'll I think I, yep, I did put a link to it on uh, the tutorial. So we know that this device is on COM3 from uh, HW uh, serial port. Uh, let me bring that up real quick. Bam, COM3. Okay. So we're going to connect to COM3. It is USB. This right here is going to send SPC at first reading. Now, this is a Motorola device on Verizon. So the SPC is all zeros. This is where you enter your SPC. We're going to have that checked right there. Let's see what this box is for. Auto high speed. Yeah, we're going to have that. And we're going to hit connect. Now it says connected to COM3 port uh, successfully. That's good. We'll go ahead and hit read because it's going to send the SPC right there. SPC is correct. Phone unlocked. It's going to give you some information right here. And then 
uh, we're going to hit right on the NV items. Now, the NV items are something that we got from, let's see if I post it anywhere. Well, these are actually the Droid Radio Unlock uh, NV items. They're not the custom ones that you might have uh, used with other uh, Motorola phones where you enter your phone number uh, at mycricket.com, at whiterabbit.org, uh, and it spits out a uh, download. Um, these are like generic droid radio unlock uh, NV items. Um, there's the download right there. So we'll hit right Motorola, Motorola droid radio unlock. Alright, here are the extracted NV items. Uh, you're gonna want to use the uh, 3.5 version right there. So you're gonna click that Boom, one NV item uh, has been written to phone successfully. And now you can close this. And don't reset it, because you really don't need to reset it at this point. I never had a problem. Didn't need to do it. Um, at this point, I go into QPST, and you can find uh, links to that on our site as well. I'll go into QPST configuration as if I had not uh, set this up before. You are going to have to close uh, the CDMA workshop or that NV item sender or the COM port will come up as uh, busy. So if you didn't have this port already added, you're going to want to go into add new port and uh, show serial and USB diagnostic. You can click this off if you don't see it immediately. So select the COM port that your device is on and then OK. And you go select that COM port and hit Start Clients uh, Service Programming, and you'll see this right there. Your sh uh, phone should populate in that area. We'll hit OK, and then we'll read from phone. SPC is all zeros, and this is going to take a little bit, so we'll just let that uh, continue to play on. Um, if you are having problems, you might you need to use CDMA Workshop. And I've outlined the steps for CDMA Workshop 2.7 uh, right there. Um, this RRIM step came from a, another device, and I did use it when I flashed this device, so it's hard to go back and see if that was required or not. Um, I kind of clearly outline it right here. So if you need to get into CDMA Workshop 2.7 or you can also do this from uh, 3.5 and above uh, pretty much just follow those steps in that area let's go up here see if our phone is still reading and it is Okay, I did put install this and put the Droid 4 in PC mode, so that uh, references that it needs to be in PC mode before you can use HW serial port. All right, that's correct. And then we'll go down to the QPST portion here. I've also done screenshots of every single screen, uh, even though it's probably not needed. Uh, we have a little QPST uh, tutorial also. I don't think I highlighted um, what needed to be changed specifically, but we'll go through that in this video. All right, settings tab. This is where it uh, it dumps you by default. Let's go to CDMA. This NAM change, uh, we didn't have to change that to Cricket, but we did. Um, that's our phone number right there. And here is our MIN, which you'll need. It's like your phone number, but it's, uh, it's usually different. I'd say 95% of the time it's different from your phone number. Uh, you're going to want to enter your phone number in first and then your MIN in this box. If you make any changes up here, we'll show you. Let's see. Let's change this to an 8. See, it automatically uh, changes this down here. So you don't want that to happen. Um, CMA2, you're not going to do anything here. Amps, uh, nothing there. You might want to change your home SID. We have a thread that has uh, default home SIDs. 
and you can change it there as well. EMTS system, don't need that. Uh, Rome. We'll click uh, browse, and this is where you go put your uh, PRL. So whatever PRL you download uh, from wherever or website, go ahead and uh, put that on in there. Uh, preferred roaming list. Uh, it tells the device which towers to interact with and try to connect to. Next thing we're going to want to move to is m.ip right here. Uh, mobile IP behavior. We left it on um, mode plus uh, simple fallback. Um, both of these profiles were modified. Phone number at mycricket.com. The text string is actually cricket, C R I C K E T, right there. And you can enter uh, cricket right there as well. Um, we kept this checked over here. And we zeroed all those out. And we pretty much did the same thing for the second profile, profile enabled right here. And then you go want to go to PPP config. Go to the UM right here. Phone number at mycricket.com. Tethered NAI. Phone number at mycricket.com. Password. Uh, cricket right there. Uh, optimized dormant uh, handoff. Um, usually we have that checked. I don't know why it wasn't checked right there. And we're going to have that right there. Password cricket. And then um, user ID again. Uh, phone number mycricket.com tethered in AI you can't modify uh, that box now let's go back because I changed this yeah kinda warned you guys about that um, I'm gonna go ahead and set that to EVRC right there I don't know why it was on wild All right, now I've placed the correct MIN back into here. Everything else has been done, so I'm going to go ahead and hit right to phone. It's going to take a little while uh, to go through this. I did write something about 3G stability on this phone. Um, we kind of had this problem with uh, the razor as well. I did change the operating mode to CDMA only to get it to stop trying to uh, connect to LTE. You do that by going to settings and the wireless networks, mobile networks, network mode, CDMA only. And also on the roaming selected uh, automatic versus uh, just home. For uh, MMS uh, you can definitely use Mray himself's uh, solution. That will get uh, your MMS working correctly. You guys can try to uh, play with the APNs. I've used AnyCut to make a shortcut to the APNs and they're right here. I'm going to go ahead and delete this APN out because it doesn't appear uh, to be working. These are the uh, stock APNs that come on the device. Uh, originally they're locked. What I did to unlock them and be able to edit them is go to APN Backup Restore. I backed up all the APNs, then deleted all the APNs, and then restored the ones I had just backed up. And then they came back uh, as unlocked. So let's check our QPST here. Alright, that error is uh, fine. We hit OK. We'll go on our device and try to call voicemail here. Call without Google Voice. Alright, so it definitely works. It's already showing the 3G icon. Now, I do recommend uh, rebooting at this point. So, this is how you fa flash the Droid 4 originally on Verizon to Cricket Wireless. If you have any questions, please uh, visit our website, use the link to the tutorial, and post it there. I'll try to address uh, any questions you guys have right there, and I'll try to modify 
the uh, tutorial so we can make it better, um, clearer, more precise uh, for everyone. Please join our forum, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and like our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash cricket users.